What's going on Yu-Gi-Oh! community? Elmo Gonzalez here with G-Sports Entertainment. As you can see right now, you're looking at a top 32 YCS mat. This mat was won at this past weekend's YCS in Pasadena, California by no other than my main man, Jeremy Mitchell. What's going on, Jeremy? Not much, man. Not much. Have fun. Um, glad I was able to attend the YCS. Um, it was really cool. My first time in California. So that was pretty awesome. Um, the weather is awesome, like they say it is. Um, but all in all, the event went really well. Um, I, I finished fifth at the Swiss. I was 10 and 1. Uh, just happened, as soon as I went to top 32, happened to, pit, to play pretty much my worst matchup was Danger Thunder. And um, shout out to the European guy. I don't forgot his name, but um, yeah, he destroyed. I think his name was Jake Kinsey. Yeah, Jake Kinsey. Yeah. He went to, you know, Worlds and everything. And um, I did not expect to play Thunder this whole weekend, at least not Danger, Th Danger Thunder. Um, so I didn't have, really had no side for that matchup at all. And um, and just looking back at it, there isn't really much I could do. I think I made really good boards, um, and it still wasn't enough. So I just, I just really just cut my uh, hat off to him, and he did a really good job. And I, um, it's those wins I can really accept when I know I did everything I could. Um, but yeah, he just, he had it, and uh, I'm just, I'm happy for him. And uh, that's just, that was pretty much the weekend for me. But yeah, man, like you said, man, 11 rounds going 10 and one. Uh, we had almost 1,600 players at this past YCS. And you know, I, I don't really have to ask what deck you played because you are true to who you are. You're true to what you say. You are the pendulum player. And in my opinion, probably the best pendulum player in the nation. So having said that, man, going 10 and one, finishing fifth at the YCS uh, Pasadena. It's a great accomplishment, man. All right, we're gonna go into the deck profile. All right. So right off the bat, you'll notice a big difference from what I've always played, but um, this is basically just pure Endymion. Um, so this, there isn't any magicians. So just to let let that out there before anybody says anything. Um, I just decided to go to pure Endymion. Um, shout out to Ezekiel. Um, his this is pretty much um, his build. Uh, definitely, you know, there are cards that I I played and he didn't. Um, I'll get into that later, but um, he definitely got me into this build. He showed me the combos, and it really it worked really well. Um, and I had a really good time uh, playing it. So let me just start off with three servant, um, three big guy in Demian. Uh, this card's awesome. I think I resolved the skull effect like <laughs> almost every match because you get so many spell counters. It's crazy with this build. Um, two Magister. Um, yeah, it was it's cool. I mean, me and Ezekiel go back and forth with this. Want to play three or play two? I like it at two because I don't like opening up doubles of this card. Uh, so, yeah, I like it at two. Um, uh, three Chronograph, just in Time Gazer, pretty much the extenders. Um, I opened up both of these so many times. I was just like, oh my gosh! But I think this engine is so great that I can I can live with it more than I could with magicians. So um, this was. This was pretty good. Just hate opening up these two. It just ugh, but it happens. Um, so probably the best. Uh, I'll say the second best. The be second best engine um, of this deck is two Cerberus, three Jackal, um, Garuda, and Bash Leak. I personally think this is the best card. <laughs> um, and I, um, this is literally because what what's so great about it is that it makes these hands where you get those two together it makes them like really like kind of broke because what you would do is you would Cerberus into Bash Leak. Bash Leak destroys itself to shuffle this bat to give you a draw um, and then what happens is you can use the Jackal to special summon this out and a lot of people don't know what it's, um, it's a monster effect but of course it gains counters and it, you can remove three counters from the field to add back a mythical beast from the extra deck uh, to your hand so basically you would just you know summon it resolve try to get serving out resolve serving and you know all of that stuff uh, but just try to get three spell counters on it and then you can add you add back jackal from your extra deck to your hand which is which is just a really good plus um so i really love that effect and um it was really good it's level four too which was awesome because this, this deck um 
you know, you try to make Dweller as much as kind of much as possible, especially if you know what your plan is, like Orcus and stuff. So um, I really love that card. And, you know, three Jackal was necessary in this build. You really want to see it. Um, and you, it's a good alert target as well. So um, probably the third best card was two Reflection. Now, I mean, this card is insane, um, especially when you summon off a Magister. That's really the main thing you want to do. Um, I'm not going to lie, this kind of killed me like the last match of day one. I lost to Salad because I opened up two of these and it's just not, it can kind of get on your nerves because you really don't, you really don't want to open this. Um, you really just want to summon it off from a Magister. It's your own little 2019 Kieran. Um, and I've done, I did that so many times, man. Nobody sees it coming. Um, and you know, it, it's, just, it's really good. Um, but just don't want to open up two. Um, that's all the Endymion, of course, three Curtain Razor I played. Everybody knows I'm not really a big fan of this card, especially going second. But um, it is a Dark, and it is an Extender, so that's pretty much why I played it. Um, and it was okay. I, I liked it. It's a good side out as well. I, at least me. I mean, I don't know about Ezekiel, but I sided out going second because I don't think it really does that much for me. Um, so that's pretty much all the monsters, I guess. But you'll see as, you know, probably the best engine that's played right now is the spellbook engine um that's what i played i personally kind of want to pump this to three um because i really want to see this spellbook engine but of course there's a card in the extra deck that kind of gets me into this if i don't see it which comes up a lot which came up a lot so um i really enjoyed this it's a free plus two i don't like opening this by itself that sucks a lot that happened to me a lot but the fact that i was still able to win those games just tell you how powerful this build is and um you know you really don't want to see this you want to see if you see it you at least want to see one of these that's why i kind of want to bump this to three um so yeah all in all this was a really great engine i'm really glad i played it um uh, three spell book of mastery. I'm not going to explain that. Um, I did play pretty much negate or I can't even say negate, but don't play super poly cards. <laughs> uh, didn't want to lose the super poly. Didn't want to lose the dark one no more. Um, this card was clutch. So um, yeah, this was really good. Um, so I guess for the draw cards, um, Tooler which is kind of the worst card in the deck, to be honest. Um, I think I'll play enough darks, but still, even when you play the darks and you banish them, you don't really want to banish them. So uh, this was, it was decent. Um, two Desires, we didn't want to play three. And, and um, especially even even with two, I kept drawing one off of the other. I'm like, goodness gracious. But um, yeah, it was, it was fine. Um, Upstart and... Uh, uh, probably uh, a really good card, um, Mythical Institution. Um, it's really good when you see it with Cerberus. Um, I think I was looking at some OCG builds, and they play like three of this in their build, and, and I don't know how they do that because it really doesn't do anything by itself. But if you don't know what it does, pretty much if, if a Mythical Beast is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, um, it gains two counters. Um, and also you can remove counters from the field and add a monster from your uh, any monster from your deck to your hand equal to the amount of counters that it has that you have um that you remove so pretty much if i if i have two counters on there, i can remove two and add blue boy so um that's um really good and i think i did that once but it's really just, just to add a servant you really want to add a servant so pretty much cerberus in this is four counters because you cerberus go bash elite draw use this to add add a servant so um, this card is really, I kind of want to bump it to two, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so the extra deck, uh, you know, one Electromite, standard. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, I don't have Purple Poison, so I kind of need something to get rid of back row. This came up a lot, especially when I got, there can only be one. Um, uh, Draco Master Teen, uh, the Teeny, uh, this was insane. Um, I love, you really want to make this after, or, or before you pin some, excuse me, um, because you can try, you can, you know, get three from your extra deck. And it's really cool that it can't be destroyed by battle with an effect monster. A lot of people forgot about that, so that was pretty fun. But, um, yeah, this card was good. Uh, Borolo Dragon, uh, I don't think I made it this weekend, uh, but I'll keep it in. Uh, beat Cobb just because weird weird reason, but because I can use tokens and I can get rid of freaking Lost World. So <laughs> in case that came up, so uh, get that from locals. But um, yeah, this is a uh, that's why I play that Bull Sword. You know that's insane. Uh, 
um appaloosa i don't actually don't think i made that this weekend to be honest but i'll keep it in it's still something um I, it's probably some matchups i could have made it in and i just kind of forgot about it because i just kind of want to get into other cards i played but um yeah and uh definitely my favorite card of the weekend was crowley i didn't know how great this card is um but basically you know like i said earlier if you don't see your spellbook engine um if you can just pin summon out everything and you know use like two like I'd, i mean i could be using like a time gears and a chronograph just to go into this and no matter what they give you if you haven't normal summoned then no matter what they give you you're you're going to plus and there's many times where like i only have two servants i have i mean i only have like two counters on a servant so i was i would summon this get a spellbook and just activate it, you know, and then draw two cards, plus get, resolve Servant. So, uh, <laughs> this card was really good, and uh, I'm really glad I played it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much, well, I can't say all the links. So, the other links <laughs> I played, I, um, you know, they're not here. Uh, thank, uh, shout out to Nicholas for letting me borrow one. But pretty much IP Masquerina, that's, one you, that's what you want to go for. Um, and I played Unicorn, you know, as the target for Masquerina. And uh, the... Um, the Hyvermax, uh, Avermax car. I never made it. It, it could have been um, Backluster Soldier, but um, I just didn't have it at that time. But definitely um, Avermax was the card I was playing. Um, I never made it though, so uh, I know Ezekiel makes it a lot. Um, and I get why he makes it, but I, I personally just didn't. So, um, but yeah, that's the card I probably would change. Um, and the last cards, uh, Tornado Dragon, um, the uh, Absolute Vortex, and. Um, you know, Abyss Dweller. I didn't make Tornado, I don't think, this weekend, but I did make this a lot, because especially like Game 3, if I know what I'm going up against, and it's like Orcas or something. Um, and uh, this came up clutch against um, Orcas player. Um, so that was cool. Um, so I guess for the side, three evenly match. Um, I think this is just necessary in this, in this meta. It's really good against, you know, Salad, Orcas, and, um, Especially Orcas, because I rather I know, Orcas usually you know ends with Babel and stuff, and then like two back row or whatever, and the Masquerina. So if I can just get rid of all that in one spell swoop, they're not really setting Crescendo that much right now. So I really like Evenly. Um, two Dinko Seka. Um, I I like I like three. I love three, but I don't love opening multiples. So when I played it at two this weekend, I drew. I actually drew this more than I drew Evenly when I sided them both in. But I actually loved it at two. I didn't see multiples, so it, that's pretty much why I did that. Um, three system down. I don't think I used it this weekend because I kind of, uh, I mean, I really don't want to say this, but I kind of just like went like pretty much just two old most of my opponents. So, and um, I did win like a fair share of my die rolls. So when I did, or I wouldn't say that, but I guess when I played against Orcus, I won a die roll. So, um, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't draw it, so and I still won. So, but yeah, I definitely would keep this in. I love this card, especially because they're not, like I said, they're not setting crescendo. So, even if they do set crescendo, this could be the last card I play. So, it does not matter. So, um, yeah. Uh, two Cosmic. Um, it helped me out against the two Draco matchup. But um, other than that, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't have Purple Poison. I'm so used to Purple Poison. Um, but um, this was good. Uh, three Dark Blue No More. Um, I didn't use it this weekend i mean i sided it in against like a ba you know fossil dino <laughs> deck um but i didn't see it but definitely i mean i'm keeping this in it's too good especially like in the mirror and you know i guess thunder um and i guess the tech of the weekend <laughs> uh definitely secret sanctuary of the spellcasters um i mean i caught so many people off guard with this so if, i mean if you don't know what it does um well first pretty much it, it's pretty much made it came in the same set as secret village i believe and it it's pretty much made to lock your opponent down with secret village so you know with secret village you know they can't play spells unless they control a spellcaster and this card says as unless they um control a face-up spell and they normal summon a spellcaster monster then they can't then they can't activate their monster's effects that are normal summon a special summon that turn nor can they attack so it's as long as you have a face-up spellcaster monster on the field and a face-up spell, which is your pin, which, you know, which is like your pin scales. So it caught so many people off guard. Um, there, I, I mean, I get, I'd probably win a million dollars for how many times people have tried to read this card like over and over and over, um, and it was insane. Um, I love this card, um, and 
you know, you know, again, shout out to Ezekiel, shout out to um, Esteban and Jesus. Um, they're his, pretty much his friends who told him about it, and um, you know, it happened to got to me. So I really enjoyed this card, and I want to keep playing it. I really liked it, and um, yeah. But yeah, that's the uh, deck. So all in all, uh, you know, going ten and one, uh, you know, good weekend. You know, obviously, you know, games are about matchups and things like that. And, uh, you know, going 10 and 1 with your pendulum deck, Mr. Pendulum Player, is a feat. Uh, no other. You know, congratulations on that. Uh, we want to give a few shout outs, uh, obviously, to our sponsors uh, Timothy Miller at Jacksonville Game Center, as well as Dusty O'Brien at Kitchen Table Meta. Um, of course, my name is Elmo Gonzalez with G Sports and Entertainment. Uh, my main man here, Jeremy Mitchell. You know, the Pendulum Player, probably the best one in the nation. Um, come at me. Somebody, tell me somebody better, you know. But other than that, Jeremy, any shout outs you want to give? Oh, uh, well, you know, definitely like, you know, of course, shout out to the team, of course, obviously, um, all, the, all my teammates. Shout out to Sebastian for, you know, um, rooming with me and, you know, uh, shout out to Nicholas, of course, again. Shout out to Hunter Lloyd. I'm really happy he made the top 32. Um, shout out to everybody in Jacksonville. Um, uh, shout out to Peter and, and Joseph Stasky, uh, probably the, one of the most underrated pendulum players that we have. Um, in this country, to be honest, um, and just shout out to this, uh, you know, all the, all people that helped me around the world, and um, and I uh, just want to make one more comment about the deck. I really, one reason I really like this build um, is because it doesn't lose to Called by the Grave and like DD Crow, which is what people were maining at that event, and, you know, for Orcus and stuff. So that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to play this build. Even with like when I played the Guard Dragon build, just if I played Shrine and it got called by the grave, you know, that even that one little thing, that one little card just could really stop my whole play because I need Dark One. So um, that's why I really love this build. A lot of people would have called by the grave set and it was just completely dead against me. So um, that's pretty much why I enjoyed it. But um, but yeah, just thank you for everybody that helped me and I really appreciate it. All right, great job this weekend, Jeremy. We'll see you at the next event.